Hello everyone and welcome to Tomorrow's Tech brought to you by 3.digital. Our goal is to help entrepreneurs and industry leaders successfully develop and commercialise their technology innovations. Many of us are driving towards building a circular economy. Today, to provide deep insights to the hard questions, we welcome on the show Yasmin Grigalunas, co-founder and CEO of World's Biggest Garage Sale, a startup designing solutions to commercialise the circular economy. Welcome on the show, Yasmin. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. What are the opportunities for technology entrepreneurs in the circular economy space? Oh, Sam, what most people don't realise is that the circular economy is a $4.5 trillion economy. Wow. And this is just in the next 10 years. Uh, when we came into the ecosystem, a lot of people would scratch their heads when we would say circular economy, and now it's starting to be a trending opportunity. Trending because it's a real commercialised opportunity to scale a technology business. We looked at the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs as they're commonly known, 17 of these goals, with one really crucial goal that stood out to us. As we were starting to, to bring technology into our own organisation, we realised to rapidly scale what we were doing and to actually stay ahead of the curve, that we could implement Sustainable, sustainable Development Goal 17, which is Partnerships for the Goals. So we looked at technology companies that already existed, maybe not even aware of the circular economy, economy themselves. And what that allowed us to do is to start to not only integrate SDG 17 into our own organisation and theirs, but to really enable our company to scale more rapidly because of that partnership opportunity. So for me, it wasn't about trying to develop the technology inside. It was actually looking externally to ensure that we can come together as a whole group to, to an allow scalable, sustainable enterprise organisations through the partnerships for technology. I think that collaboration is key to doing, to growing efficiently. Yeah. Now, I ask you honestly, what are the realities of early stage entrepreneurship? These are the realities not a lot of people talk about, Sam. So I'm going to be really open and honest Please with do. you. I feel like I've been a little, I don't, I don't think bullying is the right word, but maybe victimised in a way over the last couple of years because I've come into the ecosystem quite mature as a founder and from an organisational background where I knew the harder you worked, the luckier you became, that, that grit and grunt and grind and all of those real uh, difficult things that needed to be done would always pay off and reward you. And I experienced that in the commercial world, so I brought it straight into the startup world. And then I started to hear all these, hold on, work-life balance, or don't work too much. And I'm like, hold on a minute, that's against everything I've ever been taught as an entrepreneur. How can I come into the entrepreneurial world and work less? So for me, I ignored it, and I worked my butt off. And that means sometimes getting up at 2 a.m. in the morning to do a block of emails for three hours. But let me tell you, Sam, every time I do it, I love it. I'm energized by it. And I do ensure that I keep a good check on my own mental health and my own well-being. But I don't think enough people talk about the fact that it's not a nine to five job and that you will hurt. You'll go through pain. You'll at times have tears and a lot of fears. But if you embrace that and know that it's part of the reality and that this is not a glorified hoodie wearing nine to five job, then I think you're going to scale an enterprise that has you in 10 years being that overnight success story. But don't forget the blood along the way because there's plenty of it. I think your consistent effort has paid off as you're now moving into a high growth scale up. So when is the right time to consider leadership succession planning? Oh, this question always gets people, uh, you know, worried about my answer because I probably don't talk about it enough. So I'm going to tell you today. I think succession planning has to start at the beginning of your startup. Uh, as a founder, you might think that it's your idea and want to own it and be the glory behind the brand, but the reality is founders are not uh, always broadly skilled and we have our own lanes that we're really skilled at. And for me, as an, I'm a specialist generalist, so I can do a lot. I can go broad, but I can't go deep on everything. And so right from the start, I was thinking, What's a CIO, CTO, CFO? Who are all of these future leaders of our company going to be? And believe it or not, Sam, who is the future CEO of our company? That's a question I ask myself all the time. Again, coming from a commercial organization where I was always trying to build myself out of my job. How do I find the right people so that I'm not a blocker? On our risk uh, report, it actually says one of the biggest risks in our organization is that it relies too much on the founder. 
and I'm not hurt or upset by that anymore in any way. I think that if you succession plan early, right from the start, then the right people will start to present themselves in your organization. And that's what we're looking at right now. We have people who I believe will be future leaders in our company working with us right now, and maybe even the future CEO of World's Biggest Garage Sale. I'm excited for you, Yasmin, and sharing with our viewers how important it is to consider what's next and to get the right people in place, pipeline that talent. So thank you for joining us on the show and sharing your honest and open perspective. Thanks, Sam. And thank you to our viewers for joining us each and every week. Share this episode with other early stage entrepreneurs who need to hear the realities, the sacrifice that comes, but also what it can lead to, um, particularly in the circular economy space. If you'd like to reach out to Yasmin or the Tomorrow's Tech team directly, subscribe to our Tomorrow's Tech YouTube channel and follow us across our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram accounts. Thank you and see you next time on Tomorrow's Tech. Tomorrow's Tech, presented by 3Digital.